Hello, welcome to May 7th, 2023. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily Good Life Meditation video. I do this uh, each and every morning, shortly after waking up. Running a little late this morning, it's uh, 4.55 a.m., way late. I slept in 10 minutes. <laughs> it felt good. I do this in order to, this video, in order to remember my life objectives and principles. That's seven objectives and 34 principles that are outlined in my book, Going Alone, in the chapter called The Good Life. I also use this time to think about the last 24 hours, including my sleep and how I did managing challenges and opportunities that came my way. And then I finish with a, a forecast of the day ahead to plan the challenges, plan how I'll, I'll manage challenges that I can foresee, um, improve upon opportunities that may come my way, and in basic readiness, it's like stretching the mind, right? I mean, because a lot of things will happen that I won't, I can't foresee. Um, just be nimble and ready to uh, to move. You know, agile in the mind. Agile in the in the in the uh, epistemology, my way of making sense of the world. Agile in my mental responses. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Mostly mental stuff. Not very agile physically anymore. Anyway, let's let's get right on. First, last night and yesterday. Feeling much better this morning than I did yesterday. Ew. Boy, it's interesting how uh, I didn't feel good yesterday. But in the morning, at the same time yesterday, I didn't feel very good. I feel much better now. Um, I was more temperate in my consumption yesterday. I got a lot of exercise. Yumiko and I took the, uh, two very good long walks. We also did some strolling. Uh, we went to Belmont Heights yesterday in, uh, near Long Beach and had the most fun. It was a really fun day yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's why I feel better yesterday because I didn't work. I had fun instead. It was a good day. Slept, slept good last night too. Did wake up a little bit in the night, but not worrying, just awake. It's like when, like when you wake up and listen to the sea, which is precisely what I was doing. That's about it. Anything else about yesterday? It feels like I'm missing something important, or, or at least of note. Hmm. Let's do the good life. My seven objectives are to always be ready to die. That's my first objective. To have everything in my life in an ordered, settled state, ready for me to go. Number two is to make good and effective use of my time to not let my days just squander away. Three, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles work hard at this good life creed. Four, to cultivate good emotional reactions so that things become someone who things can't jump after me. Like yesterday, I, I, there, were, there, was, there was something that was of note. I was driving along the uh, Pacific Coast Highway with Himiko. We were closing in on the Belmont Heights area, still in Long Beach. I uh, know, I think we were in uh, Seal Beach at the time. And uh, wide road on PCH, just going along the speed of traffic. And the truck behind me decided they'd had enough of my Prius. <laughs> and they decided to pass me in the median. Went roaring around. I wasn't even driving slowly. I was driving at the same speed of traffic. And it didn't do them any good. They wound up right in front of me at a stoplight behind traffic that was going at the same speed as me. I wound up following them for at least uh, four blocks before I veered off and made a turn. I think it was on the Seventh Street. Boy, didn't phase me one bit. There were would have been a time in the past when uh, that would have riled me up. You know, the nerve. I'm not driving any slower than traffic. I'm within the speed limit. You know, what a dangerous thing! I just kind of let it happen. Yumiko and I carried on our conversation. I don't even think Yumiko noticed. <laughs> For that matter. So that's a good example of good emotional reactions. I used temperance to recognize that that man was having a having a moment, that uh, there wasn't much I could do about that fact, and to uh, 
rein in my own emotion, which didn't even come to surface. The next objective is to perform good actions. That's number five. Doing good things. Like yesterday, I uh, picked up a piece of glass that I found in the sand at the beach. That might also be why I feel good today. I did go to the beach and go for a swim, which was nice. Maybe I'll do that this morning. I will, I will do that this morning. Number six is to recognize my true limits and my true opportunities so that I'm operating within the scope of true capacity. And number seven is to do just one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully. Now for my 34 principles. War, to always be fighting against what I think is true. Reason, the instrument that I use in that war, and the sub-principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt, and humiliation. Three, the homunculus, the little man within my head, the mortal conscious, consciousness that I have. No soul, just a consciousness. It's going to wink out when I die. Four is the anchor hold, this cranium, this structure in which the homunculus is stuck, a reminder that it can't get out. Five, the home of good and evil, stuck in here. Right and wrong are opinions. They don't exist outside in nature. Six is the principle of purpose. No, sorry. The, yeah, purpose. I think that's it. I have uh, three purpi in life. To uh, be a good man, good husband and father, virtuous human being, and to uh, pursue the my personal objective is to pers continue pursuing the marketing, so to speak, of my uh, of my message of going along, which I had a great conversation with my wife yesterday about what the uh, what the uh, the two part nature of my book. It was a nice conversation. We had such a good day yesterday. Then comes the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, falling to pieces. And then the principle of nature. Everything and everyone has some particular nature, and it's good to recognize what that is, to live in accord with, in accord with it. And then after nature comes uh, the pirate ride. Free will is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. We're, uh, we are the uh, sharp end of a, of a pointy spear being driven by the universe at large. First time I've ever said it that way. I like that, actually. If I do say so myself. And then uh, comes maturity. And the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude and... Hum wisdom, fortitude and... Integrity. That's right. Maturity comes when, we're wisely, when we wisely remember our past successes and failures. Have the strength to avoid the mistakes and and capitalize and continue doing the things that work. And uh, we can then enjoy the integrity of a life lived in accordance with our values. Then comes the social principle. We are social creatures. We need each other. And the sub-principles here are diplomacy, justice, conspiracy. Diplomacy is the end we seek. We, we work with one another. Justice is the... Diplomacy is the means to the ends of justice. And conspiracy is what we do when we work together towards those ends, that end of justice. Then comes the principle of family and the sub-principle of catalyst. Family is the nucleus that we create in the center of our life, the people who we connect to. And you can either create one in the traditional sense or you can create one in, the, in terms of the connection of people in your life, the, the family you choose in that capacity, right? Well, I guess this is a choice too. Uh, you know what I mean though. So just have people. It's, it's the best thing. Catalyst means that having a family provides a catalyst to better ends. For example, choosing to marry and have children. If you have solid values about what that entails, then that's going to lead to a sometimes difficult life of Fulfilling, um, fulfilling obligations, pulling the, the hard weight of supporting your family, and helping children to grow healthy and healthy and well. 
that's a catalyst towards those ends. Family is, that is. Okay, after family comes temperance, which is our ability to control our consumption of things. And the sub-principles here are suffering, because we suffer when we tell ourselves no, and you have to tell yourself no if you're temperate. Simplicity, because a simple life is a temperate life. And apathy, the ability to disconnect from the things beyond our reach. Next comes, life will not go well, and it won't. Life's going to have blood for days like yesterday, like for me, you know, alternating hot and cold. Expect it. Next comes the horror show. Wrong remembrance that life not just won't just be bad sometimes, it'll be awful. It's happening too. And it's coming for us, each of us, to greater or lesser degrees. Remember, no free will, the universe at large. It's got plans for us, even though it doesn't have plans. <laughs> okay, next comes maturity. I already covered that one, didn't I? Yeah. Then next comes, uh, oh yeah, the Feast of Ophel. It's what happens when we get upset and spill that upset into the world, like that man passing me in the... In the uh, um, meeting in yesterday. Just let him do his thing. Don't consume it. And don't give it up myself. Don't contaminate those around me with my own upset. Find other ways. And I do. For the great, great, great extent of my life now. It used to be in the past I would be more prone to show my upset to my family. But not anymore so much. I mean, I'm open about when I'm having a bad day, but I, I, don't, I don't vomit that upset upon them, you know, vocally, visibly. Gosh dang, the gosh dang. I don't do that anymore. I just, I can just tell my wife, oh, that hasn't been a good day. <laughs> I think I'll go for a walk. Things like that. Better way to handle it. It passes. I find the best way to deal with that stuff sometimes is just to do your work, right? Do my work. Doing my job always makes me feel good. Not, not the doing of my job, but the completing, successful completion of my job always makes me feel good. As uh, Emerson said, do your work. All right, next comes uh, distraction. It's what we do to not see that there is no God. We keep ourselves distracted by the thousand, thousand things that we do. Boy, I ran into a quote yesterday doing my book reading on the beach. I think it was a quote from... Uh, who was it from? Was it Arnold? I think it was Arnold, maybe, to that end. In the chapter, uh, The Good Life, appropriately put. Then comes, uh, after distraction, comes the great indifference, which is the thing that we don't want to see. We don't want, it's like finding uh, God's, God's house and roaming through it and discovering that the house is empty, that no one was ever there. Well, I guess that's a bad example because it's just that someone was once there if it's God's house. Finding the, looking close into the universe and discovering that no one runs it, maybe is a better way to say it. Seemingly, no one runs it. Certainly no one described by any religion that I've seen or studied. After that comes the best seat in the house. To be all right with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. Then comes the restless man. It's that feeling that we have in our late teens, early 20s, that we want an adventure. Watch out. If you get that feeling, if you are a restless man or woman, you better do something about it. It'll haunt you all your life if you don't. It may haunt you even if you do. And what a good thing that is. Lucky you. If you do something about it, then you step upon the path of wildness, which is easy to find. It's the course of this dream. Leaves blown in the wind. The, dr the beasts track through the brush in the direction of our first inclination. The yield and the gain is the great life adventure. 
the story that you get as a result of your path of, of stepping upon the path of wildness, which you can do repeatedly over the course of your life. You may go and I are on it now. It's fun to be on it. It's scary too. But you get used to it after time. You get to my age, it's like, eh, just fun now. I'm not scared anymore. I wish I I wish I, I wish I could embark on the twenties with this brain now. What fun that would have been. You know, without all that anxiety and worry and doubt, fear. Okay, then comes uh, after that is the risk of avoiding risk. Imagine a spectrum from the preserving risk or avoiding risk by the safe and sane life, right? Just follow the path that's given to us. Go to school, get a job, find a spouse, get married, have a family, save for retirement, and then die. Or the other side, Tack with it all. Go to college, get your degree, and then off in the world and have a great adventure. There's two kind of extremes, and you can stay on that, right? You can just always do it. The trick is to find a dial that's somewhere right in the middle, right? Have the adventure, and I recommend doing that in mid, in early life, in the 20s. All the way up to 30. I mean, get the university. Go get a degree. Got to do that. And don't let people say, well, you know, it won't necessarily guarantee you a good job. It's not about the job. It's about the experience of the university. Get that. Then... Have an adventure until you're 30 and then come back maybe and settle down and build a family and home and a career, etc. That'll help you assuage it. Make sure you save for retirement. Do that for sure, right? Because you don't want to wind up, you don't want to wind up uh, in your sixth decade um, unable to stop working. So start saving young. Just put it aside. Whatever job you have, just put that's put the money into the, if they give you say, hey, there's a checkbox you can check here. Put a put a put a put one put you know hundred dollars a paycheck into a savings account, into a you know a retirement account. Do that and keep track. Keep all that paperwork right. And then when you get to uh, when you get, especially if you have like multiple jobs, if you have one job for your whole career, well, then that's easy. But if you have multiple jobs, then you get to be my age and you can unpack all those. Well, let's see how much money's in there now. And it's like holy crap, or, you know. I'm getting a little more detail than I need, but don't forget to do that. I wish I'd done that more. That's the risk of avoiding risk. Sin and damnation. There are eight sins in my worldview related mostly to believing things for bad reasons. The first of them is credulity, um, or no, falsity, being untrue, being a liar. Credulity, believing things too easily. Faith, belief, founded on belief, nonsense. Superstition, more nonsense. <laughs> Dogma, belief founded on tradition or, a, you know, like a great canonical text or something like that. Nonsense. You know, it's not a good reason to believe. Well, that alone. Authority, belief founded upon by being impressed by a, an office, uh, an outfit, or charisma. It's not a good reason to believe all alone on its own. Not even really, not even really at all. <laughs> belief needs to have more foundation than that. And then the last two, Rumor and gossip are not related to belief, but they're just nasty habits. Don't do any of these. These eight sins result in damnation in the here and now. Complete oblivion is next. After we're dead, there's since we have no soul, there is no God, um, that's the end of us. So um, it's best to uh, seek after reunion now. Try to connect with the people that we're on bad terms with. Maintain those connections in good terms. That, being prepared, that helps to be prepared for death, too. Reconcile our differences, if we can, to the best of our ability. And uh, then um, remember that there's no justice in any afterlife because there is no afterlife. All that we have is now. So work on making things better now when we have a chance. And recognize that with some people, we might not have much of a chance. Like, I don't have much of a chance with my mom. I continue to try, but I've reined in my expectations now after a lifetime of trying. You know, I call her regularly, ask if she's doing okay, ask her if she, ask her to let me know if she needs me, if she needs anything, and just make sure she knows I'm there. I recognize that's all she wants of me. She won't accept anything more. She'll push me back if I try. So I know my limit. 
true opportunities and true, oppor true, true limits and true opportunities, right? Next is the season of philosophy. Keeping a pen and paper handy to write down the words as they come or whatever medium you'll use for your art. Then comes the principle of script writing, the ability to forecast the minutes, hours, days, and weeks and moments, and years ahead even. The bullseye aim, an appreciation for the fact that we normally miss the mark. The uphill climb, the ever steady upward motion towards the higher elevations of life, where the higher elevations are nothing more than maturity. Arena and utility, keeping our principles clean, sharp, and present to use at a moment's notice as the challenges of life unfold before us. Nothing, nothing is enough. A stark reminder towards simplicity. And then finally, the last principle, the principle of fun, a reminder to have a good time. In the moment, remembering yesterday, and planning for tomorrow. There you go. That's my good life creed. I call it the good life as I said. Now the last thing I do is to forecast the day ahead. Today's a Sunday. Uh, my chores are done. My uh, uh, Everything, the shopping is all done. What I need to do now is to have a nice day. And I'm going to do that. I'll finish this. I'll upload this. I'll type up my words. I'll read the Bible. I'll edit a page of Freeway Bible Study, my book. Then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll feed the dogs. And then I'll... Um, upload my blog, update my blog post, update my journal, and then uh, I'll head to the beach, go for a walk and a swim. And then after that, I'm going to go out to uh, the Inland Empire to have lunch with my brother, uh, remember, principal of family, and uh, his kids, and have a nice day. I hope you have a nice day, too. I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe. And with that, my life is done, if not finished. See ya.